Hey guys, hope you're all good. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick video talking about my most recent film camera purchase, which is this uh, sexy looking chunk of plastic, the Canon EOS 50E. I think it was actually produced under a few different names depending where you live in the world. So in like North America, it was called the Canon Elan 7-2, I think. And uh, in places like Japan, it was called the Canon 55P. The, it's exactly the same camera, they were just branded differently for different parts of the world for some reason and i think there were two variants of the camera actually one where it was normal focus and one where it's got what's called eye control so it's not like eye autofocus that you get on new digital cameras basically when you look through your viewfinder you'll see your three focus points one on left one on middle one on right and uh, depending on which one you're looking at when you half push the shutter it will focus on the one you're looking at so there's a little sensor that picks up which eye which direction your eye is looking at which i thought was pretty cool you know i'm surprised that they don't have that feature included in cameras nowadays actually um because it's you know it's quite a cool feature to have so yeah basically i found this camera very recently in a charity shop near me or a thrift shop if you will and yeah i picked it up for 30 pounds which is i guess about $40 US. I had a little Google and a little search on eBay when I was in the shop just to see I was getting a good price. It's in pristine condition and on eBay they were going for sort of like 40, 50 pounds. So the fact I got it for 30 pounds I think was a really good deal. Didn't have a lens with it obviously, but I've shot Canon before, like my history with photography. I got into photography in about 2015, 2000, no, 2014 is when I first got my first camera, which was from my father-in-law. Um, he handed me like a Canon, uh, his old like entry level DSLR, I think it was a Canon 50D, no 500D is what it was, it was proper entry level and then uh, he, I got really into photography and he had a Canon 70D which he then handed down to me again when I started kind of getting more into photography. Uh, my father-in-law is a great guy by the way. <laughs> um, and then when I probably got into photography I basically, I got my first Canon 5D Mark III and when I started shooting weddings, I got another 5D Mark III and I had one with a 24 to 70 2.8, one with a 70 to 200 2.8, so I had all bases covered. I used to walk around like Billy Big Bollocks, you know, with my double camera strap and um, yeah, it was, that's how I got into photography and that's how I first learned it was with Canon DSLRs. I actually switched to Fuji in 2017, I think. I had a friend who was traveling at the time and he used to share photos and I remember thinking his photos were like super sharp and the colors were amazing, I really liked them. And when I saw a picture of the camera he was using, it was a tiny um, little compact Fuji X100S, I believe, uh, from the X100 series. And that just blew my mind at the time. I was like, how are these photos that you're taking with such a small, tiny little camera? So that's when I started researching into the Fuji system and uh, we went on a family holiday and I knew I wanted to have something compact to take on holiday so I actually rented a Fuji X-T2 uh, with a 23mm 1.4 lens which is like equivalent of 35mm focal length in full frame terms and I took that on holiday for a week, me and my wife and my two kids went to Tenerife and by the time I got back I was blown away i was ready to all chips in into the fuji system so i sold both my 5d threes all my lenses for canon and i invested in getting two fuji xt threes uh, three or four lenses for the system that i still use today and uh, never looked back you know that was in like the april of 2017 i think so just before my like wedding season started i was all chips in for fuji and it was my best wedding season i loved it i loved how light the cameras were on my back. I loved how it made me more sort of like a candid documentary photographer. And then I think it completely changed the way that I actually shoot um, photography, you know, especially digitals and the way I shoot weddings. I got into film a couple of years ago, started as most people do with a kind of basic entry level SLR, you know, your Canon A1s, your Nikon FM series, your, I actually went for the Minolta X700, which I still have today, and I still love shooting that camera. Um, it's a really, really nice entry level SLR if you're interested in one. And then I got into medium format. Uh, my first medium format camera was the Pentax 645N. I have tried a vast majority of uh, medium format cameras over this past year that I've reviewed on my channel and stuff like that and 
if you're interested, you know, go check out my old videos and stuff like that. Uh, I eventually sold the Pentax 645N for a Mamiya C330 TLR because I wanted something much more manual, much more, you know, where I had to dial in all the settings and manual focus and stuff like that. And I still use that now and I still love that camera. But when it comes to, you know, like being out and about and documenting my family and my kids and stuff like that, they don't want to sit for long enough for me to, you know, manually focus and manually check the settings of a light meter and stuff like that. And I'm missing these sort of like snap moments where I'd be getting them on digital, but where I'm starting to shoot much more film, I'm kind of missing them moments because I didn't have a film camera with autofocus. So I knew I wanted to pick up a, a film camera with autofocus. Uh, I didn't kind of know which one I was going to go for and this just kind of appeared in front of my eyes at a charity shop, right place, right time and yeah, so far, so good, I'm really enjoying it. I obviously, it didn't come with a lens, so I picked up this lens, the 50mm 1.4. Having experience with Canon lenses, I kind of knew roughly what I wanted to go for. I was initially going to pick up just like a cheap Chinese lens, there's this Chinese brand called uh, Yongyo. If, I don't know if I'm saying that right, to be honest with you. I don't know if anyone knows how to say it right, apart from the company themselves. But they make like cheap lenses that are Canon fit, like Canon EF lenses and stuff like that, like a 35mm, 50mm and stuff. And I actually had a second shooter who I used to work with that used a 35mm one. And the pictures always were very sharp. They looked really good for a lens that costs essentially like 60, 70 pounds. So I was going to initially get the body and the lens to kind of do a video to show you that you can get an autofocus camera and lens for less than £100 and show you some photos. However, I used this Canon 50mm 1.4 in the past and I always loved the look of it. It's very, it has a very filmy look to it. I think it's to do with the fact that the actual lens design is um, a planar design or a planar design, I don't know how you say it. But uh, very similar to like Carl's Ice lenses and how they're made as well. So the bokeh in it is, is very interesting and it has a very sort of filmic look to it. And um, I know a lot of photographers who still shoot Canon who actually prefer this lens over the 50mm 1.2. And considering I picked this up for, you know, I think like £140, something like that, the lens. And the 50mm 1.2 goes for like £1,000. There's a massive price difference and this lens is amazing. So yeah, so this whole setup still less than £200 and I've got, you know, decent lens, decent body, I've got autofocus on it and all the kind of things that you expect from a DSLR, but I'm shooting film. Film has had a massive resurgence recently over the past couple of years. More and more people have been getting into shooting film photography. More and more people who used to shoot film have been getting back into it and kind of rekindling their love for it and you know relearning things that they used to know. And then you've got the younger generation um, that are just kind of getting into photography but also learning about film and enjoying that experience. And then you've got the generation like myself, like people in their kind of like mid 30s who know about film photography, perhaps use one when they were younger or use disposable cameras and stuff like that. But uh, just getting into the, the whole process of actually like shooting film, developing film, scanning film and doing it all themselves and enjoying just like learning and doing everything themselves, uh, which is kind of what I'm doing at the moment. So yeah, it's had a massive resurgence and I'm sure there's plenty of, you know, big name YouTubers who I won't mention names that are, are behind that and have definitely gone a long way into helping film come back, you know, people that have been doing it for the past five years and stuff like that. And, uh, and I guess that's why we're here now why you're here watching me talk about this camera and why I'm here talking to a camera about it. But yeah, I love film, I love shooting it, I love seeing film photos, I love the film community, I love everything about it and I feel like it's just gonna keep growing over the next few years and I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of years they actually start making new film cameras which would be something that would be exciting to see for sure. So yeah, I don't wanna ramble on too long, I probably already have, but I'm just gonna, I basically, I took the camera to London last week, uh, met up with a model, her name was Sarah, and I just kind of wanted to test it out for some portraits and stuff. Going forwards, I might also bring this along when I'm shooting some medium format portraits. So I've got like, this will be my 35 millimeter version, and then I'll shoot some medium format stuff. But mainly for me, it was obviously just to use as like a family camera. So when we're out and about, I've got something that's autofocus and I'm not gonna miss those sort of key candid moments for taking pictures of my family. But yeah, so met up with Sarah, shot some photos, little bit of footage, pieced it together as I do. 
I'm going to show you that now and then come back and talk about my initial impressions of this sexy looking camera. Sloppy tappy in the brain like Tyson Fight back like you're trained by Tyson Eat veggies for the taste, no Tyson When a cop that's so enticing But I invited you over like six times Left me on red like six times You so vanilla when you text me I don't get why you just won't bless me Remember last time you know I was on live Don't act that cool, I'm not your previous girl Don't act that cool, I'm not your previous girl not that cool, I'm not your previous Yeah, my roommate's here, but she don't even mind You can come over and stay all through the night Yeah, my roommate's here, but she don't even mind You can come through anytime Yeah, my roommate's here, but she don't even mind You can come over and stay all through the night Yeah, my roommate's here, but she don't even mind Where I wanna be yeah, yeah. It's that I want you in front of me yeah, 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 yeah. I've been looking at the floor all day And no one does it better than a sad girl, ayy No one does it better than a sad girl, ayy Yeah, my roommate's here, but she don't even mind You can come over and stay all through the night Yeah, my roommate's here, but she don't even mind You can come through anytime but she don't even mind You can come over and stay up through the night Yeah, my roommate's here, but she don't even mind You can come through anytime Yeah, so those are the photos we managed to get. I had a great time shooting with Sarah. As you can see, I shot three different rolls of film, uh, Kodak Ultramax, the HP5, and the Cinesteel 800T. We were supposed to meet initially around two o'clock, and she missed her train, unfortunately, and we didn't end up meeting until sort of just after three, and it's winter in the UK at the moment, and the sun goes down at like four o'clock, so we were very pushed for time, shall I say. So shot the Ultramax first because I wanted to kind of test it out for portraits. I've never shot it for portraits before and I was quite pleasantly surprised with the colours actually. So I'm going to try and shoot that again for some portraits in the future and maybe do a video about that separately. Um, but by the time I finished that, I rated that at box speed. And actually I think my favourite picture from that was the one <coughs> where she had like the London, you know, high rises and stuff behind her and I wish I'd actually shot a few more there. I only did like one or two and that was my favourite one. But by the time we finished that roll, it was definitely dark. <laughs> so I ended up, uh, it was like dusk. So I ended up pushing the HP5 to 1600 just so I knew I could kind of get a decent usable sort of level of exposure. But then obviously with that brings a lot of contrast. So they came out really contrasty, but I quite liked a few of them actually. Uh, I developed them myself in Ilfa Soul for 18 minutes actually, so it was a long development time as well. And then by the time that the HP5 was gone, it got really dark. I brought this like video light, um, like LED light stick thing along that I've had for ages actually. That's made by Young EO as well. Yeah, it's a decent light stick. It goes a few different colours like uh, red, yellow, blue, green, purple. You can change the colours of it. And uh, yeah, I think I only picked it up for like. 60 pounds something like that and that was like a year ago now so i don't know how much they cost now but uh i'll see if i can find it and uh, link it below so that was cool so i used some of them for the black and white and it gave sort of like a flash uh, on camera flash effect and then we shot some of the sinister 800t now we shot like less than half of that roll i think really just because it got to the point where it was dark it was cold we couldn't really find anywhere 
she had somewhere in mind, but it was quite far away. The shoes she was wearing as well were really uncomfortable. So it just, it all kind of started to go Pete Tong. So yeah, we kind of called it a wrap. And then I shot the rest of the role kind of in London on the way home and stuff like that. But um, yeah, no, I had fun. Pictures came out great. And uh, obviously the camera, like autofocus on it is immense. It's really good. You know, what you don't get with a lot of these older sort of manual SLRs is the shutter speeds that you get with this. So obviously this goes up to one uh, four thousandth of a second. So, you know, even when it was quite bright still, I could shoot at like f2 to f1.4 and I could get away with it. So that's what gives you that really good depth of field that can kind of mimic the, you know, the depth of field and the bokeh that you can get with medium format cameras which is what I wanted from a 35mm. So yeah, the fact I can shoot at 1.4, even when it's kind of bright, um, it's just great. Really easy to use. It's really easy, you know, to hold the grip on. It's nice, it's sturdy. It feels like a proper camera, but it's not too big. Um, and I don't mind, you know, walking around with this on a strap hanging off me or in a little shoulder bag and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not a Leica M6, you know, I'll have one one day, but uh, for now, for like, documenting my camera and maybe shooting the odd portrait on and the fact that this cost me like 150 quid all in for like the lens and the body cracking what's not to like um so yeah so that's it for this one thanks for watching i have got one more video to come hopefully before this year is out i was in the studio recently with a kind of I would say celebrity, like local celebrity, shooting some portraits who you might recognise, especially if in the UK you'll probably know him. But yeah, that was really fun. I had the Mamiya RZ67, shot some portraits with him. I'm going to try and piece that video together and get it out before the end of the year. And then, I think I've mentioned, if you follow my channel, I'm going to have a little break, probably at the start of January, just to kind of like wind down, spend some time with the family, you know, get my head around how I want to approach 2021. Um, I mentioned before on the two on my previous video the two new series I'm going to be starting so I'm going to have one new series where I'm talking about this photography project this year-long photo photography project that I'm working on all of next year about my hometown and then hoping to release a, uh, a book or a zine about I'm going to do a series just kind of documenting me actually creating the photos for the project and then creating the book as well at the end of the year just to kind of bring you along for the ride and then my other series is called a photo walk and talk series where I'm just going to be kind of walking about either by myself or with other photographers and just kind of talking about important stuff, stuff, you know, that I am passionate about at the moment and stuff that means a lot to me or stuff that's going on in the world. From what's been going on recently, I definitely think like the first one I'm going to do is kind of a more serious one where I'm going to be talking a little bit about like depression and anxiety and just all the bloody shit that has gone on this year you know i've spoken to so many people in person and over social media and stuff and everybody is just struggling struggling mentally struggling physically like struggling financially this year has just been it's just been horrendous you know i have to keep stopping myself from swearing because i'm on youtube but uh yeah i just kind of i want to get to the point where i can talk about shit that's just not photography related but shit that i'm passionate about i'm going to treat my channel a little bit more I'm going to try and be myself a little bit more on this channel. I think every time I turn the camera on and click record, you kind of try and put on this persona and you know you have to like talk properly and do you know what I mean? Like it's hard when you're filming to actually be yourself. I want to get to the stage where I'm comfortable in front of the camera where I can just be myself and talk about stuff I want to talk about and if you're interested, great. If not, <laughs> never mind. Um, but yeah, okay, I'll stop talking out. Thanks for watching. Thanks guys, really appreciate you. And I will see you in the next video, which is going to be a good one. So look out for that. Bye.